within the offense and what y'all do as a whole uh, after you know the Fiesta Bowl, or is it still just the Ohio State offense and it's all about execution? Well, the fun thing is, is kind of give you guys a little insight. Yeah, there's been a little bit of a uh, little bit of a change. Uh, I think the tempo at which we play is a lot faster, mm -hmm. uh, which puts the defense in a very challenging position because they don't. You you can't rotate guys in as fast. You can't, you know, make adjustments and different alignments depending on our formations. So I think that's probably the biggest emphasis you're going to be able to see. Um, being also being able to stretch the field both width and height, width and vertically, excuse me. I think that's also something that again is going to be very challenging for defenses. And again, as the faster you go, they're not able to react as fast, and they're therefore kind of giving us the advantage and capitalizing on their kind of mistakes. Your head coach was asked if uh, JT made the first down against Michigan, and he kind of smiled and said, "We start practice on Thursday." How many times have you watched that play? <laughs> Too many times. I'm, I, we start practice on Thursday. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the answer to that one. <laughs> Why do you watch it? He does win the game. It's a it's a highlight. It's a controversial play, and it's something that was a, a defining moment in our season. Again, the, the play could have went either way, but that's what they considered to be a defining moment. The defining moment could have been either way, and you know. The work that is anticipated behind it, the work that's put in on both sides of the ball, whether you know you play on the team on the north or you're playing on our side of the thing. Whatever type of work you put into that, that was a defining moment in the game. So that's in respect to it, that's why it's observed so many times. Um, it's nice that it's not a controversial play on ESPN every single day anymore, because that's really nice to because let's let's move on, let's all right, you know, college football is what it is and the, the season's over. So um, again, a controversial play, again, a lot of work put in on both sides, respect for both sides of the ball and uh, Go as, you, as you look back on that game, what was what was, in your mind? What was the difference? Um, I mean, that's a nitty gritty game. Period. Uh, I, I guess. I mean, the game could have went either way. I mean, we're down twenty-one-seven. Whatever the score was at halftime, we came back. It's a situation where again I, I, we began to execute better. I think on our behalf, and I can only speak on our behalf only. Uh, we began to execute better. Um, Began to you know, coaches put us in a position to win. Coaches put us in a position to execute at a high level. That's all we did. And, um, I'm really, really excited to start the 2017 season. That's for that's for sure. What type of impact do you expect Kevin Wilson will have, Billy? Uh, kind of repeat uh, another question. It was kind of just that impact on, on the offensive tempo, uh, being able to continue to push the ball, push the ball vertically, use the field for the, everything, every inch and yard that it will give us. Uh, our formations, being able to just challenge DBs and put people in positions that we have to capitalize on. So I think that and pairing it, you know, with Coach Day and JT, kind of figuring things out the way that the offense should be run and kind of giving us that explosiveness. And he's an O-line yeah. guy at heart. Uh, yes. I'm sure that's uh, that's good for an offensive lineman. Yeah, to know it's that. it's nice to have that in our in our background. Again, you know, it's always playing offensive line. It's always nice to have a second set of eyes. Again, if something, you know, he'll piggyback something off of Coach Sud. Um, you know, being Coach Sud as the head, I mean, he's. He's the operator of the, of the offensive line, so we kind of, again, it's, it's nice to have that background, um, but again, Coach does doing a fantastic job with us over the summer. Billy, Do you think what happened in general against Clemson? I mean, it's one thing to lose, it's another to shut out. about the game. Um, What's no, that? I said I'm tired of talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm no sure, offense. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> I guess the fun part, the fun part, again, is you start a new season. Um, it is, it's a stinging feeling. Uh, you know, the, the multiple times that it's been brought up today, it's, it's terrible to think about it. Um, but again, it comes back to the lessons being learned. Again, you, you go from a very young team to a team that's, you know, the first year starters and now second year starters, guys who've got a lot of more experience and being able to kind of really emphasize taking that accountability and kind of continue to push your training. And that's something that's something that I, as an offensive lineman um, and leader of the offensive line, which Marco kind of really taking that step and saying, hey, you know, the little things that we used to let go can't be let go. It's the most attention to detail. And that's that's probably the biggest takeaway from those kind of games for, for my you, particular aspect. Did you have a feeling after that game was over that things were going to change in some kind of way? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Again, uh, Ohio State doesn't lose 31 to nothing like that and not have nothing happen. Uh, to the degree of what changes those were, I wasn't aware of. Uh, we kind of had some time off after the break uh, or after that game. So again, I kind of walked into uh, the facility and learned a bunch of things, that, the changes that have been made and kind of the philosophy in which we were going with. And, Again, you got to put full faith into Coach Meyer and just, you know, hey, trust in the process. Coach Meyer mentioned tempo as well from the new staff. What, what do defenses not know at this point in college football about tempo? I mean, they can get their packages on the field now. They're allowed to, you know, what, what, what's special about Ohio State's tempo? Uh, I really think because at the beginning of the game, you kind of let the refs and the, and the officials know that, hey, we're going to be running tempo and to not slow the game down. Okay. Uh, I think that's what kind of makes it difficult to get those packages on and those alignments. And instead of it being third and two and you're trying to run the ball, run the ball to get you know, a quick, quick dive play, um, you can't get your big boys in to stop that. And I think that's what kind of makes it special.
Um, and it helps the Ohio State's offense, so that's we're all accepting of it. Do you think JT is better suited to tempo? Do you expect him to <coughs> have a season more like 2014 uh, this year in terms of his accuracy and things like that with defenses more on their heels, or does it not matter either way? Uh, I think it, it, having a defense on their heels actually puts a little bit of an uh, advantage for JT. JT's a great decision maker, as you see, guys have seen. Uh, there's things that that kid is able to see and able to read that most quarterbacks can't. Uh, and that's it's a good thing that I'm giving him the ball because he, he can do some special things. Uh, that tempo aspect of it, again, you, a DB has to make a decision. A, a secondary guy has to make a decision. Do I have to cover the flat or do I cover the guy who's, just, who's running by me at full speed? And so with JT being able to see those kinds of things, the concepts and the philosophies of what sort of plays are going at, he'll be able to see those things, read it easier, and let's, let's replace the ball. Do you think that's going to be a kind of a different kind of look for JT? Or is it going to for a big transition for JT heading into it? No, nah, actually not at all. I think that the, because of the fact that we had uh, Coach Herman, and uh, I don't like to go back into history you know, the entire time, <laughs> but um, when Coach Herman was here, he, he kind of installed that. And then the, off, the offensive staff coaches that we had really were able to utilize that aspect of coaches, or, or excuse me, of our offensive philosophy. And those are something, that, again, that JT's been there before. He's done this before. Um, full confidence in the offense. And I know, I know the capabilities in which we can play at. It's just a matter of making sure that we we do play out those next How do you see results. Brian Day kind of affecting, kind of or changing JT Barrett in his final season? Uh, I know the one thing that they've really focused on is the aspect of the long ball. Uh, I know we talked about in the springtime with a bunch was the, his effectiveness and his percentage of hitting the long ball. Um, again, to stretch a defense and to make sure that there aren't 11 defenders sitting on the line of scrimmage, you got to hit the long ball. And I think that Coach Meyer, Coach Day, Coach Wilson, um, and all this line have really done a better job of making sure that he, can, he hits the long ball and he's protected to hit the long ball. So those two things are really emphasized on that. Did Billy, given the, uh, some of the struggles he had in the line last year, how important is that right guard battle right now? And how important is it whoever wins it really starts strong? Right. Uh, I think that I think that the continuity and the chemistry of an offensive line is probably one of the more delicate dynamics in, as as any position on the field itself. Um, so whether the right guard, the left guard, who's playing center, who's playing left tackle, I think all of those positions are pretty um, emphasized. The right guard, I mean, whoever is playing that right guard or is playing that left guard, whatever the case is, they've got to hit it strong. I mean, we've got to strike. You know, when we play Indiana, we got to be at 100 percent, 100 percent understanding on which side. You know, the, the communication levels. Make sure we're all on the same page and all aligned with what our philosophy is. What we're going to do. Going Coach Meyer mentioned that, like, I think last year was a very unique position because of the fact that we had, again, the youngest. We had two offensive linemen at key positions who have never played before. Um, you know, Jamarco Jones being a particular case where he was able to play. He played. I remember playing Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game in 2014, and you know I was a starter, and Jamarco came in for Taylor Decker and was playing against. You know, and you're kind of being able to see those things, you're kind of being able to see him play and grow. Um, I think last year, though, at being at 100, percent I think that we had guys who were nicked up, guys the depth wasn't where it needed to be. And Coach Myers alluded to that a couple times in interviews. It's you just got to continue to work that depth, continue to build. You know, those backup positions because you know if I go down, who's next? If Jamarco goes down, who's next? If Isaiah, Mike whoever the right guard is, who's next. And that's something I think that this year, uh, especially during campus, to continue to push that development aspect of it and to really show you know, all the work that we put in this offseason, you know, taking all the scrutiny from Coach, everything else. Speaking of Meyer, he's been... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Coach Meyer said there's up to seven guys vying for the starting right guard job. You don't see that very often, seven guys competing for one spot. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? And just you know, maybe give your insights on who you think might win that job. Uh, I'll pull my, my insights off. Um, just because it's kind of, it's, I kind of know, I kind of have a good feeling of who it is. I think the unique aspect of who, of the seven individuals doing it, is each person brings a different dynamic to the, to the line um, between athleticism, power, speed, um, just rawness. Um, you know, whoever it is, whoever it ends up being, I think that, you know, no matter what, the continuity and the, and the cohesiveness of the line is going to be great. I think, you know, every single, all seven of those individuals are athletic, they're strong, they're big, they're exactly what an offensive lineman in the Big Ten is, has now transformed to be, and I think we're going to be okay. Is seven too many? Is it possible for seven to be too many guys? Uh, that's Coach's decision, not mine. I just mean like, it seems uh, like seven, chaotic. I don't know. Every time you look to your right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can say that they're not, that it's not as, you know, seven guys isn't, it's like, I don't have seven new guys standing next okay. to me every other play. Okay, I, I can say it that way. Yeah. yeah, but it is a case where it makes a final decision and I just do what he says. You talked about um, how do you get the right away? Like, you know, like, 
<laughs> um, seven got, you said last year that it might have taken you a little bit longer to get to 100% because the youth on there. Uh, three of those seven guys are freshmen, true freshmen, uh, two of which haven't even enrolled yet, um, or haven't been in practice yet. Um, but the one that I was curious about the most is Josh Myers, came in as a pretty major prospect, he's a tackle prospect, very athletic and fast. Um, what have you seen from him in his first spring? Is there a difference in him as a freshman as maybe some or a typical freshman, or is he just a typical freshman, or you know, just a little insight on like what he's kind of been like? I think probably, and, and I'm starting to see this more as I get older and I start to see guys roll in, that mid-year process, especially as if you'd like to compete as a, as a contention for a spot um, in a line that is available for spots, then I think that that mid-year process really helps him. Um, you know, first off, his nickname is Tommy, and he's just a country boy, he's country lover. We just call him Tommy, and we all have across the way, 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 hey, Tommy boy, you know, just having a good time. Um, but I think that that continuity and that chemistry aspect of it really helps guys. Especially, you walk in, he's 19 years old, he has no idea what's going on, he's never played at Penn State in a whiteout, he's never played at the team at North, he's never even played, you know, the team at North at home. So I think that that kind of aspect of it will give him, gives him an advantage compared to guys like Wyatt Davis or Thayer Mumford, who came in the same class, but still are, still only, that, that couple months of a difference can, can possibly help a break a guy. Um, Josh is going through an off season, and he's you know he's continued to develop. There's things to, you know continue. Same thing with you know Thayer Mumford, uh, Wyatt Davis as well. Things to continue, but I think that, that because he had those four extra months, he went through a spring, and that name is mentioned in there. And I think that he has again, if he continues to develop, he if he goes and you know puts it all out there 100% of camp time, I think that you know again it'll raise an eyebrow to Coach Meyer, and again if Coach Meyer gives him the nod, then we're gonna go play some ball. Last